Um, it's it's Sunday now. So yesterday was a day that was full of football and Pokemon and friends, kids, friends and playdates and we didn't get back home till really late and I just was done talking. I was, you know when you just talk all day? I talked all day yesterday. And then we just got home. I think it's maybe know, 12 o'clock. We've been out all morning at a birthday party. So and now I've got a seven-year-old super jacked up on pizza and sugar. Anyway, I don't know. He's running. He's doing laps at the house right now. But I have read a little bit. Last night I was kind of just, my brain was full, but I did, I did get some reading done. And this morning it's been nice too. So I'm in the last part of, oh, let me hold it properly, The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde. Now do you guys do this? I hopped on Goodreads because I'm not liking this book at all. And I hopped on Goodreads just to kind of justify why I wasn't liking it. So I look at the low reviews and the people were thinking along the same lines as I was of it, it's just confusing and and it's got nothing to do with me not having read it in one kind of sitting um, and having kind of had a break in between. I, I put it down because it was just, I don't know, there's three different narratives, three different timelines, but the connection between them is really kind of bizarre and... You know, there's lots of women that are downtrodden and because of men and so they drink a lot. And I'm just, you know, like I don't I don't find that empowering in female characters if they defeat the way that the men treated them, you know. I I, I get abuses like I get it I just I don't know. For me it's just it's kind of boring. And there is that undertone, you know, that gothic kind of undertone. But even the bass rock, I mean, there's no real connection with the landscape. I'm not feeling that at all. I'm, the characters aren't deep at all. It's just all about, you know, them. one of them not having a life together and like kind of randomly dating this man and the other with an asshole of a husband and I don't know. Anyway, so I did that and I justified those thoughts. I, I don't know. Like, I'm very, very tempted to DNF, but I guess just for the sake of it, I'll read the last 100 pages. But I, I'm, I don't know when that will be. I should just DNF, shouldn't I? Anyway, it's just not for me. It's just not my kind of book. And then I read a bit more. Oh, and then I read a bit more of The Cider House Rules. Now. What happened in this book is it kind of works up to something and it happens and excellent and, you know, whatever. It it was kind of predictable that it was going to happen um, for me. So I was glad when it happened. But there was kind of an aftermath to the decisions that were made that I wanted to be involved in. And at the end of that chapter... It went, the next chapter is called 15 years and it skipped ahead 15 years. And I'm really annoyed. I feel cheated that I haven't been able to sit with those characters through, there's three characters in particular, through what was going to be and, and navigate with them what was going to be a really hard time personally with each of them. And, and because we've just jumped ahead and then there's just references back to you know, what happened when they all came together. I just, I, I'm getting more and more annoyed because I think you should have let me have that time with those guys. I have invested 400 pages and then you take away the thing that I was most looking forward to. So that was sad. But I think I have about like 120 pages left. By no means would I consider DNFing. But I just am a little bit sad at the moment that that's where we're at with this book. And I don't get to really sink into that moment with them. Um, and then I haven't picked this up again. Oh, so there you go. There's the reading update. So, yeah, I plan to read a bit more this afternoon.
what I do want to do is there's books just everywhere and yeah my TBR trolley thing got taken over by just crap so I'm gonna rescue it from the crap and I'm gonna set up my TBR trolley because there's all these books that are just sitting here that have a purpose in my mind and now they're on the floor I mean so I, I just you know the mid-month book bash was finish one book and get organized with where I'm at with all these reading projects so what better way to do that than a good old TBR card organization so let's have a play with that while we're sitting in the warm sun beautiful this is that's kind of my idea of a raging afternoon <laughs> okay let's do it Franklin, they're the Women's Prize, and they're all buzzwordathon things that I've pulled off my shelves. Look at that! I have a TBR card again. It feels so much better than having books piled up. Yeah, I can wheel this around with me now. That feels so good. I need to put these in the donate pile. Check out my donate pile. Oh dear. Must get to that this week. So yeah, I feel really good about that. So now I need to read some of them, I guess. But that makes me fairly good. Have a TBR card again. I used to find this kind of this process overwhelming. So we'll see how I how I feel. I guess when I have all of my books everywhere, then you can't quite be overwhelmed because you don't really have a hold on anything but when you get organized I think this might be how I run my life as well <laughs> just don't get organized um okay so I might just sit I've got maybe half an hour I'm very aware that we're on the third day of the month book bash and I haven't finished a book which is what my goal is but just gonna ignore that girl for a minute and just run with what we feel like reading and this is what i feel like reading right now i'll let you know how i get on oh it's just so nice here in the sun <laughs> okay i'll talk to you soon i'd like to say that i've got a heap of reading done but instead i've eaten lunch watched something ridiculous on tv hung out with patty but now i'm here and i've wheeled in my tbr cart it's nicely there next to my bed but I do feel like reading now, so here we go. I've also got my little blanket on. I'm gonna snuggle down for the afternoon. I'm putting everything else in the too hard basket for now. We'll see how we go. So I'm nearly halfway through this now. Um, as I don't know if I've spoken about this before. I'm sure I have, but there's dual timelines, right? Present day and back in Russia at the start of the 1900s. And I am completely engrossed in the back in Russia in the 1900s timeline and just not really interested in the other one. Though I feel like there's a reason for the two. And um, yeah. I don't know why people do dual timelines. Why is that? I know, you know, I might be in the minority of not liking them, but I just feel like 
It's like the author wanted to tell two stories. They should just stick with one and do it really well. I don't know. That's just my personal view. But yeah, I made it to there. And and I'm enjoying the story and I'm really involved with what's going to happen. Um, but always what always happens with this book is when I get to the present day timeline, I don't really want to continue on. So I put it down for a while. It's like I endure that to get to what I really want to read. Anyway, so I'm going to put this up because we're at present day timeline. <laughs> and what am I going to read now? Let me wheel over my TBR card. <laughs> so cool. It's a novelty for me at the moment. Okay, so I put that back in. Books I'm reading. I'm super duper tempted to pick this up. I haven't started it yet. But this, you know, I'm loving the kind of politics of the of the royal family and the, all the war and stuff that's going on. This is set in 1464, so a lot earlier than what I've been reading here, and not in Russia, we're in England. But um, yeah, I'm just really intrigued with that sort of storyline. I gotta finish a book for Midnight Book Bash, don't I? I really don't want to pick up the first row. Like, I'm not drawn to anything else. You know what? Let's live life on the edge. I'm gonna start this. <laughs> I shouldn't, should I? <laughs> but I'm going to. I don't know what this is about. So it's the Cousins War, so two cousins. Houses of York and House House of York and House of Lancaster are fighting. And then Elizabeth, who is from the House of Lancaster, marries Edward the Fourth of York. And then she becomes the Queen of England. Oh we well, have got the old family tree at the start. Okay, I'll let you know what I think after I read a little bit. Okay, I just went and put dinner on. But as predicted, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And I am 14 pages in. So <laughs> there was somebody, and I can't remember who it was, but they commented and said, pick this up, you'll really like it. And I'm, I'm hooked. Just the style of writing, just this historical fiction kind of, it's it's my bag it's my it's just it just suits me very well but then as i was peeling potatoes for dinner to roast i had a good hard chat with myself and i said i've got to finish a book for midmouth book bash where at i don't know half past four on the sunday afternoon i've only got one day left tomorrow and that's a monday that's a hard day to read any day outside of the weekend is a hard day to read am i right so this is my best chance. As disappointed as I am with what's going on, it is my best chance at finishing. So I'm on four, page 433 now. I've got to get to page 552. So I'm going to invest some time in the Cider House for Alls for the afternoon and see where I go. At least if I read another 50 pages, we might get somewhere. I'm just so disappointed. <laughs> there was another book like this. I read it with Heidi from My Reading Life. What was that book? And it was really thick. I'll put a picture of it here. And we loved it and we it got invested in it and then it got to the end and it was just a really bad ending, a really rushed ending. And we were both so disappointed. I just feel like that's happening again. And I just don't think it's fair after all this time. Either way, I am gonna finish it. So I'll start doing that now. Sun's setting that way. Boys are outside, hopefully expending all of their energy and getting at all of their fighting outside so that when they come in, they'll be nice and peaceful and calm and just sit and play Lego. <laughs> Could only wish right I'm gonna read while I have the chance so now we're getting to the time as you can see by the light where 
it gets cold in this room, which makes me super sad because I love sitting in here and reading. But um, I'm going to wheel my little PBR cart out there and put the heater on and snuggle down out there with those boys. Their fighting didn't stay outside, just so you know. I've been trying to sit in here and allow them to express themselves and work it out for themselves. But boy, it's hard to read when they do that. Okay. Let's go. Oh. Here's the spot. And in the green kitchen. You all know what that means. Trade my reading for cooking. It's just mixes and veggies tonight. Nothing flash. Okay, I'm back in the chair to read. I shouldn't have started The White Queen because that's all I want to read now and everything else is boring me. Especially, you know, at the end of a book that I'm just disappointed in. Sit down with this book for a while. Actually commit to a project. Actually commit to a project. Actually commit to something that I said I was going to do. Isn't that a novel idea? 6.30. I've got an hour until I have to put children to bed, so I'm going to read until that happens. I'll let you know how I go. Shouldn't have started that book. I really shouldn't have started that book. Danger, danger, danger. I just had a shower and hopped into bed. It's just past seven o'clock at night. So we all know where this is going to lead. But for that, I am going to put on my glasses. Look at me committing to this goal. I have my book. And I'm okay. The children are still awake, so there's no chance of me going to sleep soon. So going to stay awake and read a good chunk of what I have left. I'm nearly there. I still feel really cheated by this, by the way. Every time they reveal, you know, like they're kind of talking about everything that happened in past tense. You know, even somebody dying, you know, and somebody who I was invested in, but it's just like, oh yeah, that was a couple of paragraphs. And then he's talking about... Obviously, this takes place at an apple orchard as part of it, but then he's, you know, giving the updates on what happened to all these workers. And I just feel like, like that could have just been cut out. All of that information about all these workers, like, you know, oh, she died and she did this, but there was all of this backstory around these particular people. And now they're just a passing mention on a page of what happened to them. I don't know. I wonder whether his publishers called and said, get this book to us now. You're overdue. We can't extend the time frame anymore. So we just had to wrap it all up. I don't know. But there's a lot that, there's a lot of characters that could have been edited out, that's for sure. There's one in particular who I'm waiting for a resolution on. And it's kind of this ominous um, thing that's hung over one of the main characters all the way through the book that something is going to go down so I hope that gets resolved anyway yeah I'm just super bummed I'm super bummed okay I'll keep reading I'm not going to go to sleep I promise <laughs> I need my hand to hold up the book I got to the end of the second last chapter in this book so I have 60 pages left to go. I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to watch some TV and fall asleep because I'm tired. So I think that I'll be able to finish this tomorrow and then I'll have achieved my goal. And then I can get on with reading books that I'm actually going to enjoy. <laughs> We're going to bed. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night.